Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's get started right now. First step, civilians remain trapped in Mariupol. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. CBS News has learned that the United States provided intelligence to Ukraine that led to last month's sinking of one of Russia's most essential warships, the guided missile cruiser named Moskva. A senior defense official says the U.S. did provide the location but had no role in the decision to strike it. Meanwhile, word of a third rescue operation is underway in Mariupol to help the remaining civilians trapped inside that besieged steel plant. CBS's Charlie Daggett reports from Ukraine. Amid a shattered truce, heavy fighting breaking out and Russian troops trying to finish off remaining fighters. Hundreds of civilians remain trapped in the middle of what has become a fight to the death at the steelworks in Mariupol. The Red Cross confirming to CBS News tonight another rescue operation is underway following the successful evacuation of more than 400 civilians. It's a very difficult and dangerous operation. It's an active conflict, so the, the routes might be, might be dangerous. Uh, there might be uh, active fighting ongoing in the surrounding areas. The Russian offensive has already moved on from Mariupol. A U.S. official tells CBS News around 10,000 troops have pushed north, part of an advance that has swallowed towns in its path. Like Azov, north of Mariupol, from where this family told us they escaped with their lives. After surviving the massacre in Bucha herself, Yuka Malachenko begged her family to flee from the south. I was just saying, please, get out of there, please, just leave, she said. Is the whole family back together now? Yes, 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 she said. Despite Russia's persistent onslaught, Ukrainian forces are holding the line with significant help from U.S. weapons and intelligence. Intelligence that has enabled Ukrainian forces to target and kill a number of Russian generals since the war began. There's further U.S. intelligence to suggest that Russia will try to forcibly annex the eastern regions of Donetsk and Luhansk, as well as the southern city of Kherson in the coming weeks, even as the battle for those regions continues. Nora? Charlie Daggett, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. At least three killed in stabbing near Tel Aviv. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. There was another deadly attack in Israel today as that country celebrated its Independence Day. At least three people were killed and four wounded in a stabbing attack near Tel Aviv. There's been a wave of violence in recent weeks between Israelis and Palestinians. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Hillary Clinton on dangers if Roe versus Wade is overturned. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. Earlier today, we sat down with former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton for her first interview since that leaked draft opinion. She says the consequences of overturning Roe versus Wade would go beyond abortion rights. This is about controlling women. This is about turning the clock back on half the population of our country. In the 2016 campaign, Donald Trump made it clear he would nominate justices who would overturn Roe versus Wade. Did you imagine it would happen this quickly? I warned about it in the campaign. I could see that the man I was running against would literally do anything to get the votes of the extreme faction uh, of the Republican Party uh, who were willing to uh, totally upend precedent and deny women their rights. So I did warn about it, but you know, it's hard to warn in the abstract. And I think a lot of people would say, well, that'll never happen. No, but nobody will do that. This opinion is dark. 
It is incredibly dangerous, and it is not just about a woman's right to choose. It is about much more than that. And I hope people now are fully aware of what we're up against, because the only answer is at the ballot box to elect people who will stand up for every American's rights. And any American who says, look, I'm not a woman, this doesn't affect me, I'm not black, that doesn't affect me, I'm not gay, that doesn't affect me. Once you allow this kind of extreme power to take hold, you have no idea who they will come for next. It was nearly 30 years ago when Hillary Clinton famously said that phrase. And today it's led to this, the opening of the first ever global embassy for women. Elise Nelson is the president and CEO of the nonpartisan Vital Voices. It's certainly not lost on me that we are opening the doors to this global embassy for women's leadership at the same time that the rights that, quite frankly, I was born into are now being rolled back. I think we need a global embassy because we need permanence. If you look around, there are so few places for women to gather. On the walls, portraits of groundbreaking women, including her friend, Madeleine Albright, the first female Secretary of State. And I know you're thinking of Madeleine Albright on this day. Well, Madeleine and I, um we're the co-founders of Vital Voices all those years back. And it started as a dream that we could create a group that would keep the emphasis on women's issues and women's rights going forward. It's 2022. Yes, it is. Why are there still so few women in leadership positions in politics? It is so difficult to be in the public arena as a woman, and there is a double standard. Let's be very clear about that. Uh, women are, are judged much more harshly. To sustain the continuing pressure of being a woman in the public arena, you have to believe you're doing it for something bigger than just yourself. And we will have more of our interview tomorrow on CBS Mornings and on CBSNews.com. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New COVID cases spike nationwide. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. I'll shoot you an estimate as soon as I get back to the office. Hey, I can help you do that right now. High drive. Right. As the U.S. closes in on a grim milestone. There is some breaking news tonight regarding the safety of a popular COVID vaccine. The news comes as the CDC says confirmed COVID cases are on the rise in 44 states as the U.S. closes in on a grim milestone. One million COVID deaths. Here's CBS's Nikki Batiste. Tonight, the FDA now says it is limiting the use of Johnson & Johnson's single-dose COVID vaccine to adults who can't get any other COVID shot because of a rare but potentially life-threatening risk of blood clots, just as another Omicron subvariant has swept in. From the Northeast, where COVID cases are up nearly 160%, to the West, a 200% spike in Los Angeles County. The question is, what lies ahead? We have our eye on the South. When people spend more time indoors uh, to be in air-conditioned rooms, you're likely going to see more transmission. Cases are up in 44 states. Hospitalizations are rising in 33. We have this new ultra-contagious Omicron subvariant, and we also have people returning to pre-pandemic life. They're not masking, they're um, socializing indoors. A COVID outbreak on Carnival's Spirit cruise ship from Miami to Seattle forced passengers who tested positive, like Darren Seifertson, to isolate in their rooms. I literally stayed in this room for six days with no telephone service. They wouldn't answer the phone. Carnival insists travelers were vaccinated and tested before boarding and that their health and safety protocols exceed CDC guidelines. A reminder, the pandemic is not over. Nikki Batiste, CBS News, New York. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Stocks plummet after interest rate hike. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. 
Turning now to the economy, it was an all-day freefall on Wall Street as concerns over inflation and preventing a recession mount. The Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P all plummeted today with investors worried that the Federal Reserve's plan to fight inflation could slow the economy. The sell-off came just one day after the best trading day in two years on Wednesday. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger is here. Glad you're here, Jill. Good evening. What's causing the volatility? Well, investors are worried that for the first time in 40 years, the Fed is actually raising interest rates after inflation has already increased substantially. So the fear is that the central bank will either not be able to get inflation down quickly enough to steady the economy or that they go too fast and trigger a recession. It's like the Fed is driving a speeding car. They're tapping on the brakes and trying to slow it down over the next couple of years. And if they don't get it right, the car, our U.S. economy, could veer off that road and land in a recessionary ditch. Well, let's hope they do get it right. Mm. What should people do, especially those who are worried about retirement? Look, these days are tough, but I think it's helpful to remember most of us are shaping for long-term goals like retirement or college, likely years or decades in the future. Hopefully, those who are already retired didn't have as much risk in the stock market. But if you're spooked and you're tempted to sell, remember, if you cash out now, you are timing the market. And Nora, we know that rarely works. That's an important reminder. Jill Schlesinger, thank you. Sure. Are you dreaming of more freedom, more dough to thrive and find it? Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Supreme Court faces threat over leaked abortion draft. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday night. And as we come on the air tonight, public protests are spreading across the nation following the leaked draft decision from the Supreme Court that would end federal protection of abortion rights. While the demonstrations have been mostly peaceful so far, there is growing concern about potential violence leading up to the official ruling. Fences have gone up around the Supreme Court as crowds are expected to grow in the days and weeks ahead. And CBS News has learned that the justices themselves have been given extra security while several justices have canceled upcoming public appearances. CBS News sat down with former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who called the opinion incredibly dangerous and warned that more could be at risk than just abortion rights. We'll have more of our interview with Secretary Clinton in just a moment, but first CBS's Ed O'Keefe will start us off from the White House. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Nora. That draft majority opinion on the future of abortion rights continues to reverberate nationwide, and now there are growing concerns about the potential for political violence against the Supreme Court justices themselves. The Supreme Court under lockdown. Eight-foot-high fencing now surrounds the building. All entry points are blocked to vehicles. And more officers on patrol. A scene reminiscent of what Washington looked like after the January 6th attacks. The nine justices are also under heavier security. CBS News has learned general threats of violence against them are up. Their home locations have been shared online, and they're receiving more targeted personal phone threats. Justice Samuel Alito, author of the leaked majority draft opinion, canceled a scheduled appearance today in Nashville. The other justices are also cutting back on public events. The risk is real. Uh, the U.S. Marshal Service is there to provide protection for uh, judges in the federal judiciary, but it's not enough. Chief Justice John Roberts addressed the leak today, calling it absolutely appalling and called the leaker foolish. But the fallout has only intensified. In Illinois, surrounded by five states set to restrict abortion services, clinics are trying to prepare for a flood of new patients. If every state that touches Illinois suddenly has no access, we project even up to a five times increase in patient demand, especially at our health centers that border other states. Many of those out-of-state patients would be seen virtually and sent abortion pills, but those are also in jeopardy. At least 17 states have now introduced legislation to ban or restrict access to the pills. Michigan's Democratic Attorney General Dana Nessel worries it could happen in her state. Whether it's by medication, whether it's surgical, it doesn't matter. Abortion will be illegal in our state, period. Meanwhile, here at the White House, plans for a new press secretary. Corinne Jean-Pierre is set to become the first black person, first openly gay person to serve in the role. She's set to succeed Jen Psaki, who's stepping down next Friday. Nora? Ed O'Keefe, thank you. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. 
And now let's take a look at the weather this evening across the United States. In Boston, it'll be 48 degrees. New York City, 56 degrees. Washington, D.C., 57 degrees. Atlanta, 68 degrees. Jacksonville, Florida, 69 degrees. Tampa Bay, Florida, 72 degrees. And Miami, Florida, 73 degrees. Dallas, 56 degrees. Phoenix, 68 degrees. Los Angeles, 57 degrees. Las Vegas, 66 degrees. And San Francisco, 54 degrees. That is a look at the weather across the United States for this evening. And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great evening. Good night and goodbye.